Hello everyone. Hopefully this goes through today. Welcome to Lunchtime Learning on the Brilliance channel. Okay, by microphone check, video check, uh, everything's good on my end. Um, these are all being recorded in case you didn't know, but if the video's choppy, just refresh your browser and it should be coming in clear. I have put the link for our in Brilliance, this playlist on our in Brilliance YouTube channel. So if you ever want to catch the short mini lessons that I've been doing um, on a weekly basis during lunchtime, they're already available up on our YouTube channel. So what are we going to talk about today? I thought it would be nice if I went into our in Brilliance platform and talked about how to add your Siri add serial numbers because if you get a new program, a lot of people download the program again and say, hey, I don't have any new, I, I didn't get my enthusiast or I didn't get my density repair kit. And then I thought we'd go into some of the preferences. So customizing your display as far as the background color and things like that. So let's pop on into the software and see what it where we're going. I have it set up as express mode which means there are no serial numbers added to this program at this time. So now if you also notice, I am in the demo. So that means I, I can, my program looks like express mode, but you cannot add serial numbers to the demonstration version. You must always, if you have a pro, if you've purchased a serial number, you need to download the current version of the real program off the Embrilliance website and install it. Because if it, yours says Embrilliance demo at the top, that means you can't add serial numbers. However, pretend mine doesn't say demo. <laughs> and you have Express, which is what this is right here. And you want to add a, a your Essentials program or you already have Essentials and you want to add Enthusiast. To do that, go to your Help menu and choose Serial Numbers. This is going to open up the the dialog where you can copy and paste or type in, depending on how you get your serial number, if you purchase a DVD from Amazon, you need to ent enter in your serial numbers here. Type it in, click set, and the program will prompt you to, once you click set or continue, it's going to tell you, please restart it. And once you restart it, your new buttons or your new functions will be available to you. So, but I'm going to stay in the demo version. I don't want to open up another program. When you first get your program as a default, a couple things to pay attention to is that our hoop is displayed on our screen as well as this yellow background and a grid. The grid that is shown is either in metric or in inches here at the top. And if you switch between the two, that will change what is displayed, your grid settings. Now, these settings are adjusted under your preferences, which is the folder at the top of your screen that when you put your mouse cursor on it, it says preferences. The first option under our environment is the hoops. And you can find out an in-depth video on check, checking your hoops, but this, these are for your formats. If you go to our in Brilliance YouTube channel and go to quick tip video number one, that talks about changing your hoops. But I wanted to start with the grid settings because this is where for the first thing that I always go and change on my software is the background color. Now on Windows, it may look a little different, but you're going to read the information on this screen and where it says background, you're going to click on the little color chip. That will bring up some sort of dialogue. Depending on Windows or Mac, it's going to look a little different. But you can choose whatever color you want to have for your background. Click Apply. And you can actually see it show up in your background. My That yellow is gone. So when I'm doing demonstrations here on Facebook, I don't want to have a odd color showing. So I change mine to white. You may want to change yours to a light blue or whatever color it is that you want for your background. Now, right next to the background is a snap to grid. And that, if you have a grid showing, this allows your, whatever you have selected to actually snap to a specific grid line, left or right. So whether if you want to use that for accurate placement, that's always a good option to check. 
Now, our grid lines are shown by default as little tiny dashed lines. If you wanted to have a less intrusive look for your grids, you can always change it to dots. Just remember that you won't notice the difference until you click apply. And that will change the display from dots to lines back and forth. I prefer to have dashes. Whatever you prefer to have on your screen is what you want to use. Now, the spacing for your grid is set up here under your, your grid or display settings. And there is a setting for both metric and inches. So for some reason, you wanted to change to be a two inch grid so that you're, you're using a large hoop and you don't want to have tiny squares. You want them to be two inches apart. You can choose that and click apply. And when you have inches selected here, you will see a larger group, a uh, larger grid set up. And you have one set for each option. So for inches, I have set up for two inches. And for metric, I have a different setting, which means when I click on metric, I get this one or inches, this one. So you have capabilities of sharing, of um, setting up the grid, however it is that you want it to be. Next under the grid settings is calibration. A lot of times on your screen, you want to see 100%. Or if you zoom to 100%, you want it to actually be 100%. And this could be either done in either metric or in inches. So whatever it is that you're most likely working on. Notice if you switch to inch, to, when I uncheck metric, the ruler kind of changes. Each one of these is one inch or it is telling you what one inch is going to be displayed as on your monitor. Now, if you want 100% to look like 100%, you have to get a ruler. And I mean a real ruler. You can't use a tape measure because if you've seen the internet um, pictures on using a tape measure, and I have a one here, <laughs> that my one inch or even between these two little spots is actually almost, I'm looking at it here, it's seven eighths of an inch. So this is not accurate, but my ruler is. So what I would do is hold this up to my screen and you can't see me doing that here, but where this is, and I'd put my little one inch here and check where this one is, this little um, notch here. That should be at the two inch mark. If it's not, use your slider to make it be at the two inch mark. Now, this is, you, if that's for exact, okay? So if you make it to be larger, if you say this is what my two inches look like, that gonna, that's gonna change your zoom level on your, on your monitor. So what I recommend doing is getting out your ruler and, and measuring this on your screen so that is exactly two inches. The handle size has to do more with um, nodes and display in Stitch Artist. If you have a high resolution monitor, the little dots that you see when you're in Stitch Artist for your nodes are very tiny. So changing this to a higher number, clicking apply and okay and getting out and looking at it, that will change your handles. Since I don't have Stitch Artist installed, it's not gonna make a difference to me. But changing your handle size can't, clicking apply, and okay, will change how things are viewed on the screen. So if someone says, oh, I can't see those little nodes in Stitch Artist, ch check your handle size to see if that's something that you can work with. Now, the next option is mouse wheel. If you don't have a wheel on your mouse, you don't need to worry about this setting. But the wheel can do different things. Right now, I have mine set to zoom and pan. What that means is when I am in here and I move my wheel, it actually zooms in closer or further away from my screen. Well, if I would rather have my mouse win uh, uh, <laughs> my mouse wheel to scroll my window up and down, or I don't know if you can do it across, my, maybe if your mouse goes side to side, but it does, <laughs> at least up and down. If I choose scroll the window and click apply and okay, that's just going to move this little slider bar up and down which sometimes it's easier if that's something that you're used to, that's how you want it to be set. So those will adjust for your mouse wheel. Of course, if you're not using a mouse with a wheel, it doesn't really have to do anything. <laughs> 
Check for updates. If you are traveling and you aren't having an internet connection, you may want to uncheck this option. Sometimes um, all it does is it will automatically log into the system to see if you are running a really old version and the new one has been pushed and you need to um, go into it. This is, it only checks once a day. It's not annoying. What will happen if you don't have an internet connection is that the dialog box comes up and says something about a zero, zero, zero message. It basically says, I can't check for an update because you have no internet. So I usually like to keep this on because it's one way for me to know that my internet is down during the winter time for whatever reason. Now, ghost mode is actually kind of interesting because let me get a design out here. So I'm going to click OK and I, I didn't find a design that was here. So let's go let's see if I can find one. Uh, oh, did I, that's something I'm working on. Oh, we'll work on. Let me see if I can find one here. Uh, did, 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 lightning bolt. There we go. Here is a design a patch design that I'm working on on my screen. Now, when you have something selected, for example, I'm going to um, click on this one object. Do you see how everything kind of sort of grays out on the screen except for that selection? If you're not seeing that, under your view menu, there's an option that says ghost mode. If you don't have that checked. When you have something selected, all you see is that you can't really tell. It's kind of hard to see what the selection is. So when you have ghost mode, it allows you to click on something in your object pane or click on something here in our display like this. I have the center part here, this yellow gold. And everything else is ghosted out, is kind of gray. On some monitors, it may be a little bit difficult to see that. So there's an intensity slider under ghost mode. So if I move my slider down to a lower value, click apply, click OK, you have to click off and then back on again. You Can you see that the stitches are, a, are more gray, more recessed into the background? So your ghost mode allows you to, it depends on your monitor resolution. When I'm teaching, I have to really crank it down to a very low setting because otherwise no one can see the, the difference. But on your monitor, it may be perfectly fine, but that's what the ghost mode setting is all about. The final setting here in our environment is auto recover. Now, this is in case your software crashes. If you notice on mine, I have it set to zero. And that is because I, I don't need the software to save anything for me. I am saving so often that it's all this does is it uses up resources on my, my computer. And sometimes if you have auto, um, auto, antivirus software that checks every single file as it's being saved on your computer, having your automatically save function set could slow the process down, get you a lot of spinning wheels and stuff. So if you have the spinning wheel thing, one of uh, the uh, suggestions that tech support will give you is checking to see if automatically save is set to zero. Try that, click apply and okay. And that simply says, hey, I'm taking control of my software and I'm going to be using this save button on a pretty regular basis so that whenever I make a change, I'm going to make my save so that I never have to do that again. And it uses less resources um, in your software. So there you have it. I thought I would just go through and run a, through a few of the preferences. They are all explained in detail in our user's manual that is available on the Embrilliance website under downloads. There's a, a PDF for both Mac and Windows. And if you go to the preferences, you will find each one of these explained. Hopefully that helped out some of you, giving you a little bit of inspiration on what you can check out in your software. This is applicable to all platforms. Please um, don't be afraid to push buttons in your software. And I hope that you have a great day. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye.